My well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheridan Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So it is a dreary, nasty morning here in the mountains of North Carolina. I'm on my way to town. Need to run a couple errands. Need to pick up some shavings for our chicks. And also we use shavings in our nest boxes for our egg layers. Need to get a little non-ethanol gas this morning because we run non-ethanol gas in all of our small engines, you know, chainsaws, weed eaters, side by side, that kind of thing. That, uh, that stuff that's got ethanol in it that you buy nowadays, it will gum up your carburetor on your small engines and those things just try to get to run. Also on the wood splitter. Yeah, we're running the wood splitter too. Um, then we're going to come back. I got a little work we're going to do on the new sawmill shed location. You know, we moved our sawmill down to the hay barn. We got a little upgrade going on there this morning, so we're going to get that done today. So hang out with me for a little bit and let's uh, see if we can get a little stuff done. This is a sawmill where we get our where we get our shavings from. I would guess that these boys aren't running a wooden miser LT40. Probably run something a little bigger. Man. Yep. They're running something a little bigger over there. So this is a shaving operation. These boys are bagging them things up just as fast as they can. He's gonna load me a pallet worth of them up here on the truck. It's a whole lot cheaper than going tractor supply and buying, buying them down there. You get them loaded up and strapped down. All right, got her loaded up. Pallet of shavings, there's 25 bags on there. That cost me $85. That's a whole lot cheaper than going tractor supply. And it supports a local business. These guys are 15 minutes from the farm. Glad to glad to buy from them. A whole lot rather buy from them from a big company anyway. All right, here's the plan. We're going to be installing some lights back over here in the corner or along this wall where the mill sits. Now, whenever we bought the property, I had three LEDs installed right over the alleyway when we put power to the barn to begin with. So what we're going to be putting in today, thanks to the neighbor Christian, the resident electrician. I've got three more of these Hyperlight Hero Series LED high bay lights. These are the 150 watt. Yep, these are the 150s. And we're gonna be putting three of them. We're guessing, how tall do you think that is? 12, 14 feet? 12, 14 feet, yeah. So this should be plenty of light for what we're gonna do. So we're gonna be installing these. I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below. If you're interested in these, I put we put six of these in the primary part of the shop, and man, let me tell you, huge difference, huge difference. So I think this is gonna help us here. Christian has got this handy dandy man lift that goes on the forks of the tractor. We're gonna strap that thing on, and uh, we're gonna lift him up. <laughs> gonna get some elevation here. But uh, let's get to work on these things and see what kind of difference it'll make and see if it won't light this backside of the, uh, of the hay barn up a little bit so we can run this machine. Sophie, you got the move, honey. All right, we got one of them up. Makes a huge difference right over top of that mill. And we get these other two in back here in this corner. 
and that's going to make a big, big difference in this building. So. All right, here it is. Final deal. Got those three lights put up. Special thanks to neighbor Christian for coming out and doing that. He done a fantastic job. And he does, I don't know how well it's going to show up. He does a really, really neat install. There's no floppy wires or stuff hanging out, hanging down. I mean, everything's just neat, tucked away, looks clean like it should. Um, so I went ahead and uh, brought a couple logs in. I'm staging my logs out here, uh, just outside of the barn, right out here on the other side of that cattle working area. Staging out there. So I went ahead and brought a couple in. Um, like I say, I have very little patience. So we're going to, I think I'm going to put one up here and uh, fire this thing up and uh, make a couple cuts. See how it goes. Last time I had the mill out, didn't go so well. I hit some metal in a pine log and ended up throwing the blade off. Since then, I've replaced the blade. This is one of those things I'm just kind of nervous about. Um, kind of like a guy wearing skinny jeans getting out of his Prius and getting into an F-350 or something like that. Um, but you got to do it, man. You just got to take the, you got to take a leap and uh, jump right in there. So last time it didn't do so well. Let's see if we can get this thing fired up and uh, cut a little bit of a log here. All right, I saved y'all the pain of watching me struggle through this. If you want to watch somebody saw, saw fast and know what they're doing, um, Nathan Elliott over at Out of the Woods, uh, the boys down at the Bearded Lumber. If you've not seen their channel, they're kind of new getting started. Um, but man, they got, they got some good content. And then um, Robert Milton from Hobby, Hobby Hardwood, Alabama. Those are the saw milling channels that, that we watch around here, and those guys do a good job. But ended up with about four one-inch thick boards for siding. Uh, one-inch thick, eight inches wide. I got that first one down there. It's a little thicker than one, but it is what it is. And then I ended up with four, five, six two-by-fours. And this is all poplar. And I didn't, I think I did catch this on film. I hit, I hit some metal and uh, dug it out. And right here's part of it. It's like a nail head. So I cut the end of this thing off. And uh, right here's the rest of it. Flip it up here. Right there. Right there's the rest of it. So 
luckily it didn't appear to damage the blade too bad and uh, we were able to keep on sawing so but um, yeah that was a that was a little bit of a struggle for me and you know it's true of anything that you're doing kind of for the first time or you're a beginner it takes practice and you've got to do it and work at it and get used to it it's just like raising pigs or chickens or cows or whatever you know we failed miserably uh, thankfully we didn't have a YouTube channel <laughs> didn't have a YouTube channel at the time but we we made some major mistakes early on and I think this is the same thing it's just going to take more practice more work and just getting used to it learning the machine uh, learning how to cut properly how to get appropriate thicknesses and that kind of thing but glad to have it inside undercover we got lights in here now so we can work it's getting kind of dark out it's not totally dark but i think i've had enough My, i'm just i'm mentally and emotionally and just exhausted i'm just just exhausted from trying to figure this thing out i don't want to, i don't want to tear it up you know i just don't want to break anything or make a mistake or you know just just want to be careful with it so but you know, I can come out here and saw tomorrow. Don't have to worry about breaking it down, moving it into the shop, bringing it back out, setting it back up, and all that kind of thing. It's set up and ready to go. So I'm going to work on stacking the stuff that I got cut. Um, but thanks to Christian for coming out and helping with the lights. Glad to, glad to get those in. Like what I would say, please keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families. And we'll see you on the next video.